Today, I'm going to show you the best places to visit in Munich. I promise you a trip you'll never forget. It's the third largest city in Germany and the state capital of Bavaria, with about 1.5 million people. Situated on the Isar River and close to the beautiful Bavarian Alps, it's famous for its culture, beer, and football. Even though it was heavily bombed during World War II, the city's history and traditions remains. Before we start, I'd like to say sorry to any German people who hear me because of my bad pronunciation. Starting my list with a large park next to the Hofgarten Englischer Garten. It stretches from the city center and extends almost to the city outskirts, making it one of the largest urban parks in the world. It was built in the 18th century. It's styled in the manner of an English landscape garden by the English gardener and landscape architect Lancelot Capability Brown. This 370 hectare area with grass, tree woods, pasture, waterways, and a lake is one of the largest in the world. You can enjoy a nice walk in the garden and learn interesting things about its past at the same time. For example, did you know that it has a river surf scene, the Eisbachwell, where you can watch local surfing in this man-made river? There are 78 kilometers of tracks for biking and running, a Japanese tea house, and a lot of traditional beers. Also in the park is a beer garden with its ornate wooden tower built in 1790, resembling a Chinese pogado. Another highlight of the park is a hard-to-pronounce Klein Hessel over sea, a large lake with spectacular scenery that looks especially great in autumn. The Maximilian is number 9. It's a beautiful work of architecture and it's the Bavarian State Parliament. It's a beautiful castle in the middle of Munich that looks out over the Isar River. A German builder, Friedrich Berklein, planned the house. It took almost 20 years to build. It was completed in 1874. The front is in the style of the Renaissance, which goes with the fancy palace buildings that line Maximilian Avenue, which runs through the middle of Munich. Over the years, the house has been fixed up and made bigger. In 1958 and 1964, two new wings were added. Another job was to rebuild parts of the house that were lost in World War II. You can go to some committee meetings as long as there are places open and your ID or passport is shown. During these government talks, you can see the beautiful inside of the building that isn't open to the public. To get here, you have to cross the Maximilian Bridge and go over the island from the Old Town Quarter. From the top of the steps leading up to the main entrance, you can see amazing views of the whole city. It's a great place to relax and take it all in. Glockenspiel City Hall is a charming attraction in Marienplatz. It's not just the clock that draws people in, it's also the strange stories that go along with it that keep them interested. It is known all over the world for the Glockenspiel in the new City Hall Tower at Marienplatz. Find out when to go and what the moving figures mean here. Myth says that 1517 was a plague year in Munich, and the Coopers danced through the streets to bring fresh vitality to fearful dispositions. The Coopers stayed loyal to the Duke, and their dance came to represent sticking with something even when things get hard. There is a big mechanical clock called the Rathaus, Glockenspiel in Marienplatz Square in the middle of Munich, Germany. It is famous for the life-size figures that move around inside it, and it plays out scenes from Munich's past twice a day. Next is a peaceful haven in the middle of the city, Hufarten or Royal Garden, located at the Residence Palace, is a beautiful park on the edge of Munich's old town. Between 1613 and 1617, Elector Maximilian had the gardens built based on a model of the Italian Renaissance garden. However, it wasn't until 1780 that Elector, Karl Theodor, let everyone in. It's surrounded by beautiful arcade-style passages. A pavilion in the middle of the park is often called the Diana Temple, it was built by Heinrich Schon the Elder in 1615. On the roof is a copy of the bronze Tellus Bavaria statue, which shows the wealth of Bavaria, water, crops, salt, and game. But it has a secret gem, a classical temple with a history that goes back to ancient Rome. You won't want to miss this. You can also relax on one of the park benches in the Hufarten. If you're lucky, you might even catch one of the free concerts in the pavilion, which are usually classical music. Munich is home to many palaces, but none are as memorable as spectacular as Nymphenburg Palace, located in the city's western district. It's a royal retreat with beautiful grounds all around it. Constructed between 1664 and 1675, it was then extended massively over the years. The extensive main facade is over 700 meters long and is simply glorious. 
It was the Royal Wittlesback family's summer home, a beautiful Baroque architecture and the strange story of the Swan King. Once you get inside, it's like going back in time to the time of the Bavarian monarchy. Surrounding the palace is a huge park of mixed reformal Italian Renaissance-style gardens and informal English landscape garden park. The palace's large park has huge fountains, beautiful flower gardens, and the impressive palace buildings themselves. The park is open all year round and looks especially stunning in winter and autumn. You can get to Nymphenburg Palace by taking a short train ride from the center of Munich. Next stop is a gem in the middle of Munich, right next to Marienplatz, Patterskirch, also called St. Peter's Church. It's a Roman Catholic church and the oldest church in the area and was built before Munich was a city. It has a peaceful atmosphere and dates back to the 12th century, making it the oldest church in the city. It was rebuilt and renovated many times after the fire of 1368 and the Second World War, giving it its current look. The inside is very fancy and has the jeweled skeleton of St. Mandiva inside. A public clock was first put in the church's tower, which has been rebuilt several times. You have to go up 306 steps to get to the deck with a great view of Munich. Next, I'll talk about Olympia Park, also called Olympic Park, which is a sign of Munich's strength. This huge park was the center of the 1972 Summer Olympics. While many other former Olympic venues are forgotten, it's still a popular place to spend the day. It has many of the impressive venues for the Olympics that are still used today, such as the Stadium, Olympic Hall, and Aquatic Center. The Olympic Tower, which is 291 meters high, is another highlight of the park. The park is a huge activity center where you can do water sports on the lake, ski on the hill in the winter, and ride a zipline over the famous stadium in the summer. There are also many places to eat and snack. The park has also been the site of some important historical events. It's only a short walk to an important square in Munich called Obiensplatz. It's a historical square full of amazing buildings and a lot of Bavarian history. This beautiful 19th century space was named after a concert hall. The area is famous for being the site of the deadly 1923 Beer Hall Putsch, in which Hitler tried to take power and 20 people were killed. This central plaza is a landmark in the city and is full of interesting and historically important sites. Ludwigstrasse and Brainerstrasse, two major roads in Munich, start at Odeonsplatz. The plaza is also home to the beautiful Italian Brauch Church Theatiner Kirch and the Feld Hernhau, also known as the Field Marshal's Hay. If you're going to spend any time in the Altstadt, you should go to Odeonsplatz. Our second stop is the amazing Frauenkirch, also known as Munich Cathedral, located in Old Town, close to Marienplatz. It's a Gothic beauty that has stood the test of time for more than 500 years. It has been the city's main square since around 1158. Its Omian domed twin towers dominate the skyline like no other building in the central city. This late Gothic brick structure is even more well known now that Munich residents voted to limit all new buildings in the city's middle ring road to a height lower than that of the twin towers. You won't want to miss the beautiful interiors, especially The Devil's Footstep, a scary story that will send chills down your spine. Coming at number one is Marienplatz Square. It has been Munich's main town square since the 1100s, and it's still the heart of the city. It's where the old town hall, which looks like a castle, and the new town hall, which is huge, stand. In the Middle Ages, it was a market and a place for jousting. Today, it's the busy center of the city with a new bond station, shops, and restaurants. There are a lot of historical buildings, it's like a museum. The medieval streets are lined with buildings that look like they belong in a fairy tale. Many of them were destroyed during World War II, but the area has been rebuilt to look like it did before. The new city hall, News Rathaus, a fancy neo-Gothic building that was finished in 1905, is the square's most famous landmark. It still houses the city council and other government offices. Must check out the Virgin Mary column while you're in the square. It gives Marienplatz its name. In 1638, Maximilian I added the column that named Mary as the new patroness of the city. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell. Until then, keep exploring.